So we've talked about structures earlier in the lecture and we also talked about memory allocation and memory management. And so we're going to get to now the sort of the point where we say, yep, okay, I want to use structures and allocate them dynamically. Um, so structures are a little tricky um, when you're sort of getting your head around pointers because they're sort of pointers to memory addresses that then contain multiple or are then these memory addresses point to actual collections of variables and so we just sort of need to know how to access them and how to, to use them when we're dealing with dynamic memory allocation. So in depth is a bit of a probably a bad word or title here but I should have probably said more like um, just dynamic structures or pointed to structures. So going back to the earlier lecture they're really a collection of data items and so why they're really useful is they allow for like logically clustered or um, yeah, clustered data that creates an object that represents some sort of like it could be a like in a game it could you could write up game in C and like the the structure could re represent your player and in there will be a member saying like health and mana and maybe a list with all the items they own and something like this right and it creates for a really nice logical block um, it's very much in the object orientated programming uh, direction. And so it's defined using the struct keyword and then standard is accessed using the dot, right? So we've already covered this and the, the dot is how you would, um, you would access your statically allocated structure, right? Um, but now looking for instance here, they can also be di allocated dynamically like other variables in that we have the definition of it. So we know how big it is, how many bytes it takes the memories and the structure of all the members. But we, for instance, then can also take a pointer to it. So it's the same as like every other pointer, as I was saying that the pointer, the data type in front of the actual asterisk is just saying, hey, I know you store a memory address and whatever you point pointing to is, is kind of irrelevant, but if you want to access it, you need to know the size of it. And so this tells us the size. So it's saying that whatever is at this memory address stored in my struct pointer is going to be of size struct my struct. So in this case, it'd be six bytes because integer and integer is four and a short is two, right? So this is how we would allocate it. We pretty much, you can type cast to return. This is sort of optional if you want, but it's generally good programming practice. And all you want to do is say, hey, yep, malloc, which needs the number of bytes to allocate. It says, okay, allocate me size of and the structure struct my struct which is six bytes so i'm saying allocate for me six bytes and then put the save the the memory address into my struct pointer right so now we have six bytes in memory allocated which we can then use to populate the values of this structure but how do we access it because we can't use this um this dot notation anymore so here's more of an explanation what i just sort of talked about so Accessing the members is now a little bit trickier because we have this dot to access the member. But for instance, we have we don't actually have the, um, the what's at the memory address yet. We only have the memory address, and so with a standard pointer to get what's at the memory address, we use a little asterisk to dereference the memory address, and then we can access uh, and then we have access to what's at the memory address. And so we can do a similar thing in with structures in that we have we put brackets because we need to keep the order of operations so it needs to firstly dereference the memory address so this is the same as using an integer pointer so now we know that star my struct pointer will have dereferenced it will have gone to the memory address and be like okay cool here we have a structure and so now we have the structure and we can then use the dot operator the member access operator to access like for instance the integer member and so this is how you do it. It's sort of a two-step process that you dereference the pointer and then you access the um, the, ver the member, right? And so this is what I have here. But this is quite tricky and the syntax can get very hard to follow sometimes in C. Um, so luckily, like for instance, this is a long example. First, de first dereference the, um, the pointer and then you can access the, the member and setting it's the exact same thing, right? But... Uh, there, this can be messy and confusing, and C has an easier way for us, which is the arrow operator, and this is a minus followed by a, whichever one that is, uh, less than sign. And so, what this operator does, is actually does both of these steps in one, in that it, it dereferences and it accesses a member. And so instead of um, using this, 
we can just simply say, okay, cool, my struct pointer, I want you to dereference and access int member. And this does both of them in the one step, and so it's very simple. And so it keeps the syntax very simple. But we need to know what this is doing in that it's actually dereferencing the memory address to get the structure, and then it's accessing the member. So it's essentially going into the memory structure forward in memory to access the, uh, the appropriate member. And so this is the actual allocation of um, both of them. And so we can see a quick example here. Um, with my the same my struct again and this is the same lines that we saw before where we're allocating it and so here we're doing some um, error checking which i mentioned in my pointers little demo and so if we want to actually set the short member we can just say my structure little arrow short member or the int member is just the little arrow int member and so here all i'm doing is setting int to be typecasted uh, of the short so i'm really also just reading um the member so I will do a quick example for this now. 